considering our situation and the job losses since the lockdowns in response to COVID-19. Now, moving north, we've been following the situation in Mozambique, both before and after the horrific attack in Palma, in which insurgents killed and beheaded uh, some foreign workers. The northern part of Mozambique is rich in resources, but what does this all mean for investment in the southern African region and beyond? Professor Gerard Erasmus is a founder of Tralac, the trade law center, and he joins us now. Uh, Professor, thank you very much. Firstly, let's talk about Mozambique's um, response. There, there was a lack of transparency, not much news coming out of northern Mozambique around those attacks, around the vulnerability of refugees. Uh, some speculated that that was actually to keep investors, but surely it would have the, the very opposite effect. Well, um, you're right. This is not only destabilizing that region and that country, um, but um, it could st uh, destabilize large parts of Southern Africa and the effects could, could, could spill over into neighboring countries. The nature of this dispute, if the reports that have been coming um, out uh, over several years now are correct and they, and they seem to be so, it means that there are deep-seated socio-economic problems, poverty problems, uh, the ideal um, um, ground for, for extremism to, 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 to uh, take root and to flourish. So it is, a, it is a, a, the type of, of, of um, problem that is not easy to resolve. And unfortunately, the indications are that the Mozambican government at this point seems to believe that uh, the solution is a military one and that is bad news yeah well well the reports are that uh, total for example um that that was uh, mining for gas has has pulled out completely all its workers and and only the army is left there at those offices if if you're a foreign investor in in mozambique right now what sort of uh, response would you be looking for from from mozambique what would you be wanting to hear Well, investments are, are quite specific in nature and, and, and um, resource-seeking investments like this one is, they have a particular profile. And in this instance, um, it seems that uh, Total was prepared to invest the um, discoveries that were made in uh, 2009 and 2010 apparently on the basis that of pro of promises that have been given to um, uh, to provide security so i assume that the um risk factor the um uh, um, um uncertainties uh, were part of the calculation that was made and um a, a lot of international uh, investment um, has, has taken place, and they are behind this 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 uh, investment. So the, the the fruits are there. the The prospects of 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 a good investment being made are there, but it's under very very difficult conditions. And there are other countries in Africa, if you take the DRC for example, where the same applies. So I believe that the the security factor was factored in. Uh, promises were given but that the situation got out of hand yeah. completely. Are, are there lessons... Whether you will do the same thing again in that same country is, is, is very doubtful now. Yeah. Well, well, I wanted to ask you, are there lessons from, from the DRC? And I, I, I mean, this points to the security capacity of Mozambique, but will investors also be looking to uh, the response, what other countries do to the whole SADC region to see if they, they can be safe in this region? Yeah, um, the SADC factor is important. SADC um, has arrangements and structures in place to, to, to assist member states with peacekeeping operations, and this type of problem could fall under that. But you have to be invited into the country to do so, and the Mozambican government uh, 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 is giving no indications of being prepared to do so. But if the Mozambican problem as a, as a security issue um, and as a, uh, a, 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 a bad signal, a very negative signal about uh, the attractiveness of our part of the world, 
as an investment destination. If those are not addressed, the consequences will not stay limited to Mozambique. That that seems to be clear. Yeah. And, and right now, I mean, Africa as a whole is moving towards uh, free trade. The, the agreement has been signed. Um, there's there's some uh, smaller protocols to, that are being looked at. But, but internal trade would be important and also external uh, investment on the continent. What should Africa be thinking about here? Well, um, we must be a little bit specific when it comes to investment. If I'm investment, let's say, in investing banking or sell a cell phone company or retail and, and, and services, there are markets like the South African one, one that is uh, uh, an attractive destination that has a record for regional integration. Uh, so let's distinguish a little bit. Uh, and take into account the nature of the investment and the, and the, and the resource uh, um, um, profile of what, in, what is being invested in. So um, mining and, uh, and um, uh, related industries are often, unfortunately, associated with socioeconomic problems, political problems, uh, um, conditions with respect to how uh, the local population um, are, uh, is treated, and often these matters land in international court. So the the profile, the picture, resource mining, extractive industries, is 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 a problematical one. It is not that bad in in many other areas. As a matter of fact, there are, uh, are fantastic op investment opportunities in many other se sectors. So I would say let's keep that in mind and remember that investments and investment decisions are specific. Yeah, so, so in finality then we can rely on the smarts of the investors that they won't conflate uh, what's happening in, in Mozambique with South Africa because it's such a different market. Um, although there sometimes is talk of a, a possible uh, retaliatory uh, terrorist attack even if we get involved. Yes, you're right that we have to distinguish the, um, the markets and how attractive they are. Uh, Africa is definitely on the radar of international investors. But the, the security problem, the destabilization effect, um, if, 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 this, if this civil war or, or, or this insurgency uh, boils over and, be, and it cannot be controlled, and I am I'm doubtful whether it can be controlled or can be resolved as a military issue. If that escalates and it starts disrupting uh, the corridor connections to South Africa, uh, the central and southern parts and other industries in, in, um, in, um, in Mozambique, then we can potentially sit with a completely different type of problem and a very, very difficult one to resolve. I would think that um, uh, ministries of foreign affairs in many southern African countries are watching this with, with, with discomfort. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for your time tonight. That was uh, Professor Gerard Erasmus, a uh, founder of TRALAC, the Trade Law Center. And yes, we'll follow uh, the response uh, to what is happening, the brutal, brutal attacks in northern Mozambique. Uh, Total moving out all of its workers for now and seemingly, uh, presumably, other com uh, companies following suit. Uh, so a ghost town, some of those um, big companies, uh, their facilities right now. We'll keep track of that for you.